Testing. Hallelujah. Testing. Thank you, Brother Aaron. God is good. All the time. Praise God. Sister Sonia, Brother Tim. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You look good, brother. Hey, um, before we get into the worship service, hallelujah. Yeah, young adults, please, please. You want to go to young adults? Now's the time, hallelujah. It gets gooder and gooder. Amen. Gooder and gooder. Praise God. We have, uh, we have, pastor already prayed me in. Praise God. Thank you, Brother David. I know I wasn't saying no to prayer. We never say no to prayer. Hallelujah. We never say no to prayer. However, your anointing is absolutely correct because Holy Spirit said that right when I looked at Brother Tim. We're going to anoint Brother Tim in, in oil, and I need everybody to stand up on your feet. We're believing in, how many of you believe in the name of Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Well, to be obedient in this anointing, we're going to anoint Brother Tim and Sister Sonia and Pastor and Elder Howard, please come. And, um. We're going to anoint them in oil. What we're standing in agreement for, hear my heart, family. Let's not read too, in, too much into this, okay? But Holy Spirit is going to bless them with a fresh anointing and rebuke any ailments of this world of this enemy. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and we speak a fresh fire and passion over their marriage, over their family, their children. Amen? Amen. How many of you receive it for yourself? Yeah. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Get excited, somebody, please. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask um, Pastor John to pray. Heavenly Father, we lift our brother and sister up to you right now, Lord. Lord, we just pray right now yes, Lord. that you just touch them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet. We pray for healing. We pray for spiritual healing. We pray for physical healing. We pray that, Lord, you cover them with your blood as you already have. And, God, I pray right now, not only for them, but for this whole church right now. I pray, dear Lord, that their marriage is like teenagers. And, God, they're just going to get excited again. They're going to stay. Listen, you're going to stay excited, you two. When you look at one another, it's just going to be love, love, love. And, God, we, just, we rebuke anything that's in their mind or heart that's not from you, Lord. We love you. We love them. And we give you the praise and glory for all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So we have a, our worship service this evening is titled, Overcoming Temptation. Amen. And uh, the overflow of this message and this word, Brother David, stems from what Holy Spirit taught us on Sunday. Say with me, God sees everything. God sees everything. Amen. And the beauty of this word that pastor preached, that Holy Spirit taught us, amen, is that, isn't that life-changing revelation? Just had a conversation this week with somebody, and I said, don't you realize God sees everything that you're doing? And it got even deeper, Brother Brandon, love you more than you love me. It got even deeper when I said, don't you know God knows what you're texting? Is this thing on? Some of y'all got two inches taller. What? Yeah, it's time, to, it's time to clean house. Amen? So I say all that because of the fact that Holy Spirit tonight said, I'm going to teach you how to overcome temptation. And so we, we have what's on screen. However, Holy Spirit wanted me to read out of 1 Samuel. Say it with me, 1 Samuel. And we're going to be in um, chapter, uh, hallelujah. 1 Samuel, let's go to chapter 24. <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. Listen, all we're doing is blessing our Lord Jesus, amen. He's right here with us, amen. Don't get close to that drop of mic, okay? <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you care about people like that, then there's something wrong. Something wrong. Right? We don't want something wrong. We want it all right. Okay, let's, uh, 
I'm just going to read, and we're going to go until the Holy Spirit says stop, and we're going to get into uh, this worship service as far as overcoming distraction. Whew, now it happened. Say it with me, uh-oh. When Saul had returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, take note, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. I need to back up now and just pause right there because this is the story of King David. But he wasn't king yet. Saul was the anointed king from God, okay? Now, if you back up even further, remember, David's first appearance was with Goliath. And if you recall, when he showed up, he had to report to the king, obviously, because the king is the one that makes all the decisions. Amen. Aren't you thankful that Lord Jesus Christ makes all our decisions? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All he's asking us to do is obey, right? Is just listen. So I, I love that story because of the fact that here's Saul and he's looking at this child, but he's moved by his faith. He's moved by his relationship with God. He's moved by the way he speaks, but then Saul being Saul, he starts to put his armor on him, right? He starts to outfit him, oh, you're going to need this, you're going to need that, you're going to need this. And I don't got no pictures on the screen, but you could just imagine, yeah, you could just imagine, here's David as a shepherd, Sister Rosie, a, shep a shepherd, that he, all he wore was his sandals. Um, it, it looks like a dress back in their attire back then, right? And just rugged looking, just in his sandals, got a sling on his side and, you know, just. And then now you're going to outfit him in all this gear. And he's like, what is going on? And then he told Saul, I can't go in these. I'm not used to that. Right? I'm not used to that. And I love it because he reflected back on the bear and the lion in his faith that God delivered him from the bear, from the lion. And there's moments like this in our life that we have to look back at God's glory and what he delivered us from. If you don't, then guess what? You become a spoiled brat. Can I get an amen? amen? Well, you're not grateful for nothing and you're just always complaining. And I'm going to tell you, when you complain that way or when you're not grateful, period, when you're not grateful, you are just a beacon for the enemy to attack you. But when you're grateful, mm, when you give thanks to Lord Jesus Christ, when you give thanks to Father God always, what happens is his presence in your life, his light, his, say it with me, anointing, his presence is so bright. That's the glory of God now. That's the glory that blinded Saul. Amen? And we're not talking about this Saul. We're talking about, of course, Saul of Tarsus. So I apologize, I'm not trying to confuse you any. But I'm saying that glory is so bright within you that don't you love it? That what you're doing is you're worshiping God, you're just having, a, having just a relationship with the Lord, that you're living a gooder and gooder life because it's constantly, constantly listening to the Holy Spirit. I have to adjust this. I'm not going to hurt you, Holy Spirit. Okay, Holy Spirit, you want me to do this? I'm going to do that from now on, and I'm not backing up. As a, as a husband, you get your wife involved, honey. This is what the Lord says. We have to do it. Look in my eyes. We're going to do it, right? Amen? Amen. We're going to do it. So you hold me accountable, I'm going to hold you accountable. Amen? No lip. Right? <laughs> Biggest tattletaler right here. Right? And believe you me, she'll chicken wing you. So, let, so, so, so I say this to you because I had to give you, uh, you know, just a little history with the relationship between King David, at that time David the shepherd boy, and King Saul. The relationship grew because, as you guys know, David, he's a worshiper. Say it with me, worshiper. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, read your Bible. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked me. Read your Bible. He played, he played his, his instruments in the field, sang unto the Lord. He wrote the book of Psalms. Psalms is, is, is songs, is poetry, a love story. Come on now, somebody. Come on now. As you know, Holy Spirit's been encouraging us. Write. Write. Write it down. Write it down. What God's given you, write. Maybe there's a song in your heart. What if God has given you a song 
Hear me, family. What if God is giving you a song that he wants you to write and sing out, and that very song will break every stronghold in your family? Can I get an amen? amen. Now, I pray that conviction is falling on you as it fell on me. God wants to, God wants to be so real to us as if, like, just like I'm touching this book. Is he that real right now in your life? Amen. Is he that real where you know that I used to act and react a certain way, but I don't do that no more? Because I could feel his very presence, his breath in me, that he won't allow me. I used to go left, but now this foot don't even go that way no more. Can you get an amen? And so we talk about this. It's okay to give God praise. I'll give God praise. Amen. It's okay to praise. So things happen, you know. I mean, David, he would sing songs and, I mean, check this out. David would sing songs and, and, and Saul would be just consumed with evil spirits. And as soon as he starts to play his instrument, this is how anointed he is. As soon as he starts playing his instrument, instrument, Satan and all the demons flee. Hallelujah. Let me ask you something. How much more covered by the blood of God you are, say it with me, I am. How much more as a beloved child of God can you do? Lord Jesus Christ already left heaven, came and died for us, spilt his holy blood, hallelujah, resurrected, amen, on that glorious third day, and now God lives in us, amen? So how many of you have a song in your heart? Do you have a song in your heart? Skim a marinky dinky dink, skim a marinky do. God loves you. Skim a marinky dinky dink, skim a marinky do. God loves you. He loves you in the morning and in the afternoon. He loves you in the evening and underneath. Skim a marinky dinky dink, skim a marinky do. Say it with me. God loves you. Amen. Just sing to the Lord. Right? Sing to the Lord. Can you say that with me? Sing to the Lord. We're living in a generation where we're just quiet. Come on now. How is it that we have a, a huge army that we have, but we only have three or four people with a sword that's willing to fight? Everybody else is back here like this. Well, let's, let's get together and pray about this. Let, hey, come on, everybody. Let's pray about this. I rebuke that. We have to fight. Say with me, fight. Don't allow the devil anymore to have any say in your life. Can I get an amen? amen. Half the room. Y'all don't want to say nothing? I'm not playing around anymore. I'm done. I'm not playing around no more. Read on, yeah. <laughs> so check this out. Saul then took 3,000. Saul took. That's good. That, that, hey, that's good. Look, look, that's good right there. Hey, hallelujah. Go ahead, get back, auntie. Hey, that's love right there. Give God praise for auntie, amen. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. It's good to laugh in God's house, amen? amen. What more can he do? Right? Right? It's already done. Can he get a hallelujah? hallelujah. All right, so is, is that enough of the backstory? Did you guys get it as far as the relationship with David and Saul? Right? I mean, Saul basically admired David, and he was supposed to mentor him he was supposed to you know yeah right but then unfortunately as you guys know the way the devil works he likes to whisper things mm -hmm. I, I love how you did that sister Brittany mm -hmm. <laughs> she said mm -hmm. so it got to the point in their relationship where it's no good bottom line is the bottom line is Saul wanted to murder, kill 
take David out. And this is where we start here in, in chapter 24. So we're going to start in verse 2. It says, Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goat. So he came to the sheepfold by the road where there was a cave. And Saul went into a tent to his knees. He had to go potty. Saul had to, I think he's number two. Well, why would you go in a cave? You just have to do number one. Why are y'all looking at me like I got three eyes? Y'all act like we don't live in Kentucky. You get a number, you number one. Oh, there's a bathroom right there. I just see a tree. There you go. That's the bathroom. You know how much family tells me, church family tells me, you need to use the restroom. Brother, go over there. There's a tree right there. It's like, um, I, I don't like a palm tree. You're funny. Huh? Potty train kids. Oh, that's how you potty train. Golly. Hey, I, I can't even argue that point, Sarge, because growing up, that was the ocean. The ocean was the toilet. <laughs> you, seriously. M M mommy, I need to go. I need to go really bad. I need to go. Go, go in the ocean. <laughs> Man, we just turned left. We just turned left real quick. <laughs> but we're still worshiping and preaching God because this is what Saul had to do. He had to take a number two, so he went into the cave. Oh, it gets gooder. Listen to this. David and his men were staying in the recess of the cave. So they, lay, they, they waited back because it's going to stink. <laughs> There's no ventilation in the cave, y'all. Why y'all looking at me like this? He's going to do number two in the cave. So his men is like, I ain't going to. I'm going to stand right here. <laughs> Pastor, am I making it up? Amen, Pastor? I'm not making it up. Come on, John Boy. Man, it's so good to see you smiling, brother. All right. So then the men of David said to him, check this out. Then the men of David said to him, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand that you may do to him as it seems good to you. Let me pause right there. What we didn't read is that David and his men were already in that cave. Do it with me. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that part of this movie, right, where it's like, meanwhile, David and his crew was back there in the back of that cave because they're hiding out. And here is the one that is trying to murder him, popping a squat. Right? I don't know what kind of diet they had back in the day, but <laughs> but my point is, his, may I say this, his men that are the closest to him is saying, glory to God, look, he's right there, it's time to, right, kill him. So the question is, we can move further, but Holy Spirit said, I thought we were going to read more, but Holy Spirit said he doesn't want to move more. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. The question is, does God tempt? And here in James 1.13 says this, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. When the Bible says no one, does that mean no one? Huh? What about just a few? Maybe one? How about two? Huh? No means no. You don't have to say it so mean. But it's true, right? No, no one. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. If that is you, repent. I don't say it religiously. It's time to change your mind, change your heart. God does not tempt you. Say it with me. God does not tempt me. Check this out. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. So the question is, when we go back to the story that God had us read from 1 Samuel 24, and I encourage you, when you have time, go back there and read it. 
really awesome because there's more that I thought that we were going to read, but Holy Spirit said no. How many of you would have listened to your right-hand man and cut his head off? How many of you? Let's just be honest. Be honest with the Lord. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you right now, his, his head be on my keychain. He wouldn't even be in full squat position and his head would be off. He'd be halfway down, halfway down, and th that's it. I'm, I'm confessing this to you. You know why? Because here's my opportunity. But what I love about a worshiper of God is that it doesn't matter what people say. Father, it's what you say. Amen. So the story goes, he just cut a piece of his, of his, uh, you know, his clothing. He just cut a little piece of it while he was going boom, boom. And then he let him go. And then David called out to him and showed him, I could have, I could have killed you, but look. And then that conviction hit Saul where he was like, you are a man of God. You are a man of God. Are you a man? Are you a woman of God? Huh? Be careful now when you say amen. Because are you easily influenced in your emotion? Are you easily influenced by what other people say? This is where the rubber hits the road, right? Can you imagine if he did it? Father God Almighty would have dealt with him. Because Father God, he didn't say to do it, right? Say it with me, God sees everything. You know, the beauty is, is that that's his heart, David, as he was there. I can do this, but I know my father is watching me. I know my father sees all. You see, father sees all, and you should be thankful for that. Because the moment that we turn our faces away from Father God, His mercy, His grace will continue to pursue you. But the Word of God says, though, if you want nothing to do with Him, there will become a time where He will let you go over to yourself. And this is where a lot of Christians are today. God, where are you? God, why is my family going through this? God, what about my children? God, I've been saved for 32 years. Why am I going through this? The encouragement that I have for any soul that's going through that right now, Father God is asking, number one, repent. Repent. Say that word with me, repent. Be thankful for Lord Jesus Christ, right? Number two, get plugged in. Had a conversation this week. Another, listen to me, family. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I have to preach you the truth. Another brother and sister telling me, well, I'm the body of Christ. I don't need to go to church. And I looked at both of them. And I stood right there and I said, we are the body of Christ. Not you, not me. We, together, are the body of Christ. Amen? And may I ask you something? When that trumpet goes off, is Lord Jesus Christ coming back for a toe or the whole body? <laughs> Ain't going to get no toe jam. If you're a toe, you better be connected to the foot. Right? The foot bone connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bone connected to the shin bone. The shin bone connected to the knee bone. Right? It better be the complete thing. Glory be to God. Open Arms Community Church is the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Give God praise. There's none, there's none of this conversation of, well, I'm the body of Christ. See, that's, that's, where you, that's why you're in a pity party. You're, you invited yourself. And it's only a party of one. And now you're just having these conversations. Your heart is hardening. 
You don't want to be around other Christians? You think Christians judge you? No, nobody's judging you. You're judging yourself. You're insecure. You have a chip on your shoulder. You're mad at everybody. You don't want to own up to the fact that you messed up. Oh, pastor, nobody wants to hear that anymore. Help me, Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody wants to hear that anymore. They want to put the blame on everybody else. Blame the pastor. Blame the elders. Blame the deacon. Blame that family. That family. Oh, they don't like me. Every time I want to say something to them, they just run away. They don't want me to be, they don't want me to be around them. When they're eating, they don't want me. Then go somewhere else, but stop running your mouth about it. Can I get an amen? We wonder why we're sick. But how are we living? How are we speaking? What is the truth? Why in the world would God send his son for crying out loud, his one and only son, to pay this ultimate price so that he could free his spirit? Say his name, Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit doesn't have to be behind some veil where it's impossible to get to him. Because of Lord Jesus Christ, anyone who calls on his holy name, you are born again. Hallelujah. In the family of God. You have this power in you. Hallelujah. But here in my heart, the story continues because it don't just end there. We just had this discussion not too long ago. Pastor and I, we talk about all the time. We believe this Bible. This is the only book I believe. From the front to the back, a hundred percent. You want to know about Father God? You have to know the Old Testament, Old Covenant. It's daddy. You want to know about the New Covenant, the New Testament? Hold on. You got to stay in the New Testament now. Why is that, Pastor? I'm going to introduce you to the son. His name is Jesus. You want to know about the New Covenant? You better make sure that you know about the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. You better make sure that you know about the New Testament. And get ready now, because here it is, the New Covenant and the New Testament. Amen? Don't you love that the way this Bible, the way this Bible is laid out, In my Bible, almost about halfway through, is the Old Testament and the Old Covenant. Say it with me, Father. Father. In the middle, just a few pages, this is, say it with me, the New Testament. The New Testament. Say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what, beloved family? Your Bible set up the same way. This last chunk here, say with me, New Covenant. New Covenant. Say with me, New Testament. New Testament. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You can't break it apart. Can I get an amen? amen? So the question remains. Do you have a relationship with God that it isn't all about Lord Jesus Christ? This is where it's going to rock some of you people, and I'm thankful. You can claim you know Lord Jesus Christ all you want. Guess what? The devil knows Lord Jesus Christ. Every devil, every demon knows Lord Jesus Christ. So none of that impresses me. The question that I have for you is, does Lord Jesus Christ know you? Really examine yourself right now. This isn't a matter of your attendance here at your beloved church. This isn't a question as far as what you do for the Lord and the ministry. This isn't a matter as far as how good you are. I'm asking you right now, does Lord Jesus Christ know you? Because the only one who can say so is Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit is the one that will conversate with you, that will encourage you. Holy Spirit is the one that will remind you 
See, people don't like to hear this, but this is the truth because the Bible says so. And once again, we believe the Bible from front to back. Lord Jesus Christ himself said, it's far better for you that I go. So this is where a lot of people don't want to hear, Pastor. And I've had this conversation, and it's open now, so we're just going to run with it. Everybody's crying out to Lord Jesus Christ and asking where he's at. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. The job is done. Our Lord Jesus Christ is perfect, and he has all the authority. You just say his name. Let's try that. Lord Jesus Christ. I believe and declare just by you saying that name. That the holy temple itself, that you feel his anointing. Right now, there's many of you. Right now, who could feel it? Be bold. Who could feel it? Hallelujah. That his precious anointing, his spirit right now is just running through you. That's how powerful the name of God is. But yet we have the nerve not to treat this name as holy. To not fear this name like we should. And I stand before you because I fear God. And I don't want any of our family going to hell. When that trumpet goes off, you know what the hardest thing is? I tell Trish this all the time. Pastor, hear me. When the trumpet goes off, I'm asking God, please don't let me look back. Amen. But I'm going to share this with you. Don't, don't clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. I'm going to share this with you. I'm struggling right now because I know the time is coming, and I don't think every one of us is going. I believe some of us right now are just so lazy with God, so religious with God, so comfortable, so familiar with God, that we think that we could be warm and live in this world, but yet I'm a Christian. No, you ain't. You're not. You're double-minded. It's time for us to wake up, family. It's time to truly understand this word repentance. I'm not the kind of brother that says repent and then next week you're repenting again. You never repented. Why am I preaching to you this way? Why am I trying to put, because I, the, the trumpet might go off right now. But we have to stick and stay firm to what God says to do. Is he your God? Hmm. Is he your God? Is he your God in your marriage? Is he your God with your children? Get ready now. Get ready now. Be careful. So does your children, does your children show the fruits of Holy Spirit? It's time to change that, amen? How do we change it, auntie? We got work to do at the altar. Right? We can't enable children, grandchildren. We can't enable that it's okay. It's all right. There are people going to hell. There are consequences to sin. There are consequences to temptation. Amen? Each of you is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. I'm not, listen. In Jesus' name, no matter how hard I preach, whatever I'm bringing to the table, I'm throwing myself under the bus. But if you're hurt sitting there, if you're convicted, the altar's always open. You don't have to wait for me to finish preaching. I encourage you to be obedient to the Holy Spirit because this is serious. Look at what we did to Lord Jesus Christ. And praise God we called on his name, Sister Stephanie. Praise God that we belong to him. Praise God that we're covered by that precious blood. But there is an expectation from God in our relationship that we have with him. I hear so far, I, I, I hear so far too often, oh, why, why did Eve have to eat that fruit? I don't know why she did that. You know, in judgment and all that, right? And I always tell people, be careful. Because she may have eaten the fruit, 
But what's your worship like? What's your worship life like? You're telling me that you, you're, you're, you're telling me that you know you don't ever make any mistakes, right? I encourage you. Holy Spirit wants to bless you with a fresh wisdom, a fresh anointing, a fresh clarity. Say it with me, clarity. clarity. Stop talking about everybody else. Amen. You got aunties, uncles, cousins. You got cousins that don't, that don't receive Jesus or live in. Stop talking about them. Just pray for them. Amen. Just speak life over them. But let's just stop talking about them. Let's stop. You know, it don't do any good for you. It don't do any God for Holy Spirit. It don't do any good. It doesn't. All it does, it calls in darkness and demons. It actually starts to harden your heart. You know why? Because you're so focused on what they're not doing. But guess what? As you do that, you're doing what you don't supposed to be doing. See, the conviction is strong in this room, and I'm thankful for that. Because I would rather be known as a brother in Christ that preaches you the truth, that wants to bless your salvation in Lord Jesus Christ and wants to bless Holy Spirit's presence. Amen? Amen? And if you're not, listen, and if you're not with it, that, that, that's between you and the Lord. But I'm going to tell you, ain't nothing going to change. Nothing going to change. Because I'm not here, I'm not here to try to be popular. I'm not here to try to impress anybody but my God. Amen? I'm, I'm not. I'm just here to just tell you the truth because when that glorious day comes, and it's coming soon, it's sooner than we think. Brother William, if we say next five minutes, guess what? We better live like it. Nothing pisses me off more. Yes, I said it. Nothing pisses me off more than another brother or sister to talk about the rapture, to talk about the coming Lord Jesus, but they don't want to live right. What does that mean? That you're going to tell me and agree with me that my God is coming next half an hour? But then you don't want to get right with God? Preach. Preach, Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what it is. That's the fruit. Right? Bad fruit. You can't tell me you're an apple and when I bite into it, it's yellow and sour. And you're lemon. Right? Right? What about this one? One of the biggest excuses right now in this world. This is going to hurt some people. Say it with me, it's okay. This is one of the biggest deceptions of the devil when he has you sold that you actually live a life this way. If you truly have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the devil, he doesn't want nothing to do with Lord Jesus Christ. Who has all the authority? And where does that authority live? Through the power of who? And that resurrection power in you, does, does it submit to a little bitty devil that wants to try to talk to you? You see, the thing is, is that a lot of people want to carry on different conversations, and they think that they're talking to themselves. But what these idle conversations truly do is you're calling in demons to talk to. It's not a conversation with yourself. You see, as a beloved child of God, you have the comforter that lives inside of you, Brother Matthew. You have God in you that you have someone to speak to for eternity. You see what God did? God took that garden of Eden and he put it in you. That is the power of my Lord Jesus Christ. He took what God lost in the garden and he placed it in you, Kathy. And you have 24-7 access to God to walk with him wherever you go, to do whatever you're going to do. 
build houses, hallelujah, build mansions, and the whole time God will build that with you. Amen? Make factory parts, and the whole time, guess what? God's making those factory parts with you. Amen? You fixing cars, guess what? God will fix all the cars, right? You're a chef, God will cook everything for you, right? Whatever it is that you're doing, God will do that in you and through you, but his expectation is that you would worship him and have a conversation with him. But what happens in those moments where, oh, I just don't feel good. Oh, my gosh, that, that person's just so annoying. Uh, did that person just look at me funny? Why are you looking at me so funny? You know what? I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. Does God have anything to do with that? Is that functioning out of love? Is that loving your neighbor? But you see, in those moments, what we do is we tell God, I don't want to talk to you, and I want to call darkness to come into my life. Say, hallelujah. That's Holy Spirit just told me. Say, you beat me to it. Say it with me. No more. No more. Hang on, amen? amen? Are y'all still good? Amen. Then when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin. And when it's full grown, it brings forth death. Beloved church family, I am a brother. I am a pastor. Holy Spirit has ordained me. And I'll tell you right now. I am held accountable when that glorious day comes. And my very objective is to make sure that I am obedient to what everything Holy Spirit has for me to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wake up the men in this room. Men, raise your hand. Now, the ones that are married, keep your hands up. The, the rest, you put your hands down if you're not married. Men, you will answer to God for yourself. But as a husband, you will answer to God. In how you have blessed your beloved wife. You will answer. So if there's anything that is going on right now, men of God, that you're not doing correctly in your household as a man of God, as a husband, I charge you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ to repent and bring that to the altar. Amen. Where's the women of God? Women of God, raise your hand. Women of God, you all are anointed, masterpiece. Filled with Holy Spirit, you have the power of discernment. You have the power to speak things into existence. The sensitivity in your relationship with God Almighty is so special and unique. It's the beauty because it shows our new covenant and the relationship that we have with the Father. But if you're running your mouth, if you're gossiping, if you're just running your mouth talking negative, if you enjoy, if you enjoy drama, God, God is calling you to repent and lay down that at the altar. Just lay it completely down. God wants to get rid of that from your life. It doesn't belong in you because guess what? He's doing something new in your life. Isn't it incredible that God wants to change us to the gooder and gooder? The question that I have for you is, do you want it? Once again, it's all paid for, it's all done. Right? It's all paid for, it's all done. Do you want it? Amen? Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Amen? Isn't that beautiful that when you think about this, this scripture... It starts with resisting, right? And that's what a lot of people see. Oh, I got to resist the devil. I got to resist sin. I got to resist these drugs. I got to resist cigarettes. I got to re resist alcohol. I got to resist. But let's back up now even further than that. What does it say in that very first line? Submit to God. How many of you show of hands could truly tell me? Listen, you can lie to me, but God knows your heart. But God asked me to ask you this. How many of you, as you sit here tonight, are you truly prepared to have yourself completely submitted to God Almighty? And it's okay if you don't raise your hand. 
And those of you who have not raised your hand, I encourage you, will you make, will you make tonight the night? Will you make tonight the night that, Father, I'm done living this life the way I think I should live it. I want to live my best life. Amen. I want to live what you have in store. Hallelujah. I don't want to be moved, right? I don't want to be moved by opinions, what the world's doing, the wars, the hatred, the gossip. I don't want to be moved by any. I want to just walk with you, Lord. Right? I just want to be blinded by your glory. How many of you really choose to be blinded by God's glory? Because when you're blinded by God's glory, you don't see flaws in anybody. You just see them as a soul that God died for. And that they will be saved in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Everybody stand up on your feet for me, please. We shared a lot of laughs tonight. You know, we, we shared really cool stories. We shared some serious moments. Um, we got to share, and, and here we are to the end of our worship service. Well, that's the vapor of a life that we live. It's going to be over soon. And rejoice, because we're all going to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what I love about hearts of a worshiper, our church family, is this. Is that even though we know where we're going, even though that we know that we're going to be in heaven for eternity, I love your heart <laughs> because you want to bless God. You're continuously just wanting to bless him. You're continuously just wanting his presence to reign in your heart and your mind. You continuously want his peace. And I'm going to tell you. Whatever you want from the Lord tonight, he will pour it out. I promise you. I promise you. Holy Spirit already showed me. And I'm talking about revival like you would never believe. Revival isn't a conference. Revival isn't a concert. Revival isn't being weird and having flags. Revival, say it with me, is in me. And God wants to do a fresh revival in your heart tonight. Will you do that? Will you do that? Amen. Come to the altar.